Hello and welcome back to The Real Music Talks. Today's guest is Lyle Oliver, a singer-songwriter originally from Scotland, now living in Canada. How are you doing, Lyle? I'm doing great yourself. Yeah, not too bad, not too bad at all. Um, so for the people listening that have never heard of you before, and obviously we've got quite a UK-based audience, how would you describe yourself as an artist within the music industry? Uh, I would say that I'm a sort of an alternative country artist. Uh, don't try and sound like your traditional Nashville sound coming out now, but uh, or I, I want to be my own person. And I would say I'm kind of a alt country Americana sort of artist sort of thing. Makes sense. And what went into defining that sound? It'd be good to hear maybe like your musical history. When did you first get into music and how did things develop from there? Okay. Well, I've been writing music since I was about 14 years old. So that's for a couple of years now. But anyway, uh, I uh, started off, you know, writing just pop music and I just kind of like being a storyteller. And that's the one of the things about country music I find is really, really, you know, suits me because I do write about stories. That's what I do and real, real life events. So I think that suits that type of music very well. And when did you first get into music? Do you remember like the first memory you have of like first hearing music or like first picking up a guitar? What happened was my father, basically my grandmother had a piano and my father asked us if we would like to play piano. And I said, sure. My sister said, sure, too, but I was the only one that kept it up. So the rest of them, you know, didn't didn't do it. Right. So music has always been in my blood. And like I say, I wrote my first song at 14, like even when I was taking I'm classically trained. And even though I was taking classical music, I find myself kind of writing sort of pop songs and that sort of stuff. And that's what I wanted to do. Interesting. So like, you know, being classically trained, like what was the interplay between that and your songwriting? Was it almost kind of like a different approach? Did it help your songwriting almost? Well, I think, I think uh, when you, you have more uh, training, I think that always, always helps you, right? So, uh, uh, and I like so there's some beautiful classical music out there, you know, that like Mozart and that, that I really like, and he's kind of gets in your mind and you get all these, it, it evokes the emotions in that. And that's just a sort of thing I like to try and do with my own music sort of thing. So and it's kind of catchy. I think, I think Mozart's kind of catchy to tell you the truth, some of the stuff he's got, you know? So, uh, I try and, I try and write music that's sort of, uh, for the everyday person, you know, someone, something that basically, I always say, it's, I want to write music that gets into your head and music that's, you know, makes you want to be, smile and be happy. That's what I keep trying to do. Um, what does your songwriting process look like? Maybe talk me through like, you know, where does it, does it start with like a melody that you come up with? where do you get inspiration from, I guess? My music is it's actually deities to tell you the truth. Sometimes I come up with a lyric. Sometimes I come up with a, a riff. Uh, sometimes it's just something I've seen on television that, you know, inspires me. But you know what, for me, actually, I've said this before, is that I find songwriting for me is a gift. And uh, I know that for me, that the songs that I write that sound up the best are ones that kind of come to just come to you. And uh, basically, like I've been lying in bed with my wife and, she, and you know, she'll be moving around. She'll go, you're going down in the studio, you've got an idea. And I say, yeah, I do. And I have to kind of do it right there and then or else I'll forget it. You know what I mean? And that's what ends up happening. So a, a lot of just stuff just comes organically. That's interesting. So do you have that kind of like recording space in your house almost? So you've always got that outlet there where you can just get an idea and like sort of dump it out of your brain almost straight away? Actually, yes, I, I, I do. But I also will even pick up my phone and just do like a voice memo sort of thing, you know, and <clears throat> put an, <clears throat> an acoustic guitar on there or basically just like do a little vocal, you know, just mimicking the sort of melody that I've got. But I have to put that down or else the next day of it, when I wake up, it'll be totally forgotten. You know? Makes sense. And then obviously when you listen back to that again, it gives you the inspiration of this is the idea that I had and it all sort of clicks again and you know where you're going to go next. Exactly. Um, so how do you go about like once you've written a song going to like record it if that makes sense so you've got that idea on your voice your, your you know voice notes or whatever like how does that turn into a fully fledged finished piece of music 
Well, I'm a great believer in most of my songs were written, first of all, and I have a acoustic guitar that I, you know, it's a, that I write seagull guitar. It's made in Canada here. And I, I, I write most of my material on an acoustic guitar, sometimes on piano. Um, but I actually really believe that if you've got a, a strong song just with acoustic guitar and a vocal, then you know you're on to something. And the, for me, then what happens is, like I co-produce a lot of my stuff, it's just basically painting the canvas because you've got the, the sort of, you know, everything's there. And then, you know, you, you piece it all together to kind of the way you kind of want it to sound. Yeah, that totally makes sense to me. Like having the the bare bones there, like solid, gives you the foundation for everything else. And like, actually, all you really need for a good song are that basic, like really good chorus, good chord sequence and the verse. And then you kind of build it from there with different dynamics, different layers and take it on a bit of a journey. So I completely agree with that way of thinking. Yeah, you know, if you give your song, like if I, I can have a, I can give my song to myself to produce or I can give it to say 10 different producers. And the song is going to sound different, you know, from every single one. But you're going to have that core song that's that's, that's there, you know. And that's the most important thing because you can put different versions of a song out there. But if it's a if you've got the fundamentals or the bones of the song that are strong, that makes the song, you know. Yeah, completely agree. Um, so, like we said at the start, you moved right from Scotland to Canada. Talk me through why that happened. What was the experience like? And also, how did that affect your musical career? You know, I think one thing I will say, I think my music has a British influence. And I think I think um, that Canadian music is, is somewhat different from, from British music. And I actually am proud of that. And I actually like that, to tell you the truth. I think it gives me a bit of an edge to my music. It makes it a bit different. Uh, I came, We came over basically because my father got transferred over here and we came over to try try it out and uh and it was something that like I say we've just we've just stayed here uh but I don't think I've lost the British influence because I had that British influence growing up because we kind of came as a teenager when I came over here you know it's interesting that you know that there's like a different like culture to the music almost like do you want to talk a little bit about that what are like the similarities and differences that you've noticed you know, I think it's just even my guitar playing sometimes, the style I play, like my guitar player I that I have playing with me now, you know, I try and get him to do certain things. And he, it's just that British sound. I don't, I don't know if it makes any sense to you. Um, but I find it's just that uh, I'm I'm influenced. I, I still listen to people like the Beatles or Rolling Stones and that sort of stuff, you know. And they've got a def definitely a different sound for like if you were to compare them to John Fogarty or something like that, you know, like or somebody uh, that Tom Petty. It's still different. Do you know what I mean? But there's, there's a different vibe that you get from British music, I I feel. Anyway. And I like that. I think it's, I don't know what the word is, but um, influence is, like I say, it's just a British influence. Yeah, it makes sense. It's almost like a little bit of an edge that's brought about by all those British bands and the sound they have almost. Like, because subconsciously, like what you listen to when you're growing up, it's going to affect the sort of music that you make. You know, it yeah. is going to have that sort of impact. So the music you're surrounding yourself with and the cultures that you're with are going to sort of have that effect on what you're doing. Uh, be good to hear like how that sort of affected your songwriting as well. Like how was your music developed personally over time? You know, my, my music's developed uh, just as, you know, I, I think you get, as I mentioned before, I think, for, song, for me, songwriting is somewhat of a gift, but you can craft your skill. You know what I mean? So you basically, you know, you can hone it, hone your skill, you know? You know, when I first used to write songs, you know, I you think everything's great that you write. And uh, I used to sit there, oh, that's fantastic. And then, you know what? You realize after a while, it's not all that good. You know, everything is not great that you write. So one of the things I learned is I would basically write a song, think it's fantastic, then you, I'd leave it for a while, let it sit. And I come back, you know, maybe in like two or three days, sometimes I go, that is fantastic. Or sometimes I go, that's not that good. You know, you need to start all over again. So I never used to do that. I used to just produce things, get them finished, but now I don't do that. Now I sit on it and I, and I, and I also spend a lot more time in my, in, in my uh, lyrics for my, for my songs now. Like that's really important to me 
Like I like to try and have strong lyrics, you know, strong uh, um, imagery in my in my songs, and it's something that uh, I take pride in, to tell you the truth. Yeah, talk to me a little bit more about that then. So, like, what is the the process of writing the lyrics, and what um what are you trying to achieve with that approach? Almost. <clears throat> well, the lyrics. Uh, I, I'm a, I actually pay attention to lyrics. You know, some people maybe perhaps don't. They play, you know, they just pay attention to the the the, the, the chorus or whatever it is. But to me, I actually, like I said, I like to t tell a story. And I kind of take, like, for example, uh, my single that I released just before was called Dear John Letter. And that's all about, obviously, a breakup. And uh, and that basically, I try and put a whole bunch of different images in, in my songs to reflect the title of the song. You know, and uh, something that people can actually relate to. Like I used to write just bubblegum stuff, you know, where you don't really put a lot of effort into your to your lyric, and you can have a lyric that's okay. But now what I do is I I sit with it and I go, no, this is better. This is better, you know. And you just keep trying to come up with a the best lyric you can. So I actually do spend some time. I can have my song finished. I can have the lyrics for the song, but they're changing all the time until I get it the way I want it, you know. I would probably say I spend more time on my lyrics than I do with the actually the writing, to tell you the truth. That makes sense to me. And I think when you're listening to to artists' songs, you know, and you hear the lyrics, to me personally anyway, it's kind of obvious when they've just kind of said that lyric will do, that'll work for the song, or if they've gone over the lyrics over and over again and tried to make the story and the message as strong as possible. Like, to me anyway, when you hear lyrics to songs, it can be fairly obvious. Well, that's like, like I try, like, I mean, I don't know whether all my songs are meaningful, but I try and write meaningful songs. I like songs that are like, uh, not just cookie cutter, you know, it's not just the same sort of thing that's done by the, by anybody, if you know what I'm saying. I'm, I want to try and actually stand out. And one of the ways I think that I do try and sound a bit different is I do spend so much time on my lyrics. Like I really do. That's important to me. Yeah. Is that something that you weave into the final product? So say if you put like um, a single out or something, you include all the lyrics, you know, for people to, to see through and understand it? Yeah, I think I, I, I would say that's one of the comments that I get about my songs is your lyrics are incredible. You know, this, you know, there's always a po positive feedback about lyrically, lyrically, this is really, really strong. And, and um, again, it's because it is because I wordsmith so much, you know, and I really, really try and spend a lot of time on it to try and what can I do better? How can I make this sound even a bit better or cooler or whatever, you know, just not just generic, you know, so that's what I try and do. Um, and when you're within that process, how do you know, like the song's finished, if that makes sense? Or do you just have like a feeling, right? This is the best I'm going to do almost. Well, you know what? I don't, I, I actually don't mind. I, I actually a good barometer for me is my wife you know I, I i so again what i like to try and do is again i'm writing music that hopefully will connect with the general population like you know an everyday person and you know if i can get somebody like that relating to this and going that's really cool you know then i think i've achieved what i have to to achieve you know that makes sense. So we talked a little bit about the songwriting and the lyric process. It'd be good to hear about your experience with performing live today. Um, what kind of feedback have you had? What has the reception from the audience been? And um, what experiences have you, have you had generally in terms of like playing in different venues and stuff like that? Well, basically, there's a really strong uh, artistic community up here in uh, Thornbury. And I've always had good re responses to my music. A lot of people... Uh, my music instantly likable, you know, so they, they, they really enjoy it. Uh, I find that, that up here is a wonderful place to live and a wonderful place to play music. And uh, I couldn't think of anything better to do, to tell you the truth. Makes sense. And, um, you know, do, how do you kind of build fans, I guess, as well? You know, like, is it that you connect with those people after the show and talk to them and get to know them further? Be good to hear maybe like how you grow your fan base in the local area. Well, one of the things that's important to do uh, up here is just to uh, go to open mics, that sort of thing. There's a whole, whole bunch of different places that have open mics. 
you basically you network yourself and basically through networking that you get a lot of musicians and then from meeting musicians and that stuff they have people they know when you when you play your gigs all you do is you talk to people after your shows and that stuff and uh just try and be a, a regular person and just go there and, and, and you know try and and connect with the people that are coming out to listen to you yeah glad you touched on that i think that's really good advice for like young musicians starting out or like new singer songwriters right because once you get that network and it's not about just showing up to open mic nights and playing it's about like actually who are all these other musicians do they play in the local area maybe i could play some shows with them you know or put on other nights and stuff like that and that's how you kind of like get into the local music scene almost one one thousand percent one thousand percent and uh up here up here it's been tough because of covid and everything you know it was a lot of places were shut down for the longest time still pretty tough uh, i'm not playing too much right now actually i'm in the studio doing quite a i've got i got 21 songs i'm ready to to, to, to uh cut right now so uh, i'm actually trying to do that and getting that done so that i want to go out and have a lot of material you now to, to play for people Talk to me a little bit about that then, if you're working, that seems like quite a big project at the moment. What's that process been like, you know, putting all the songs together into a record? You know, I, I, there's nothing that makes me happier than being in the studio. I got to tell you that right now. So it's, 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 it's a labor of love. Like I, I can actually sit in the studio for days and go without sleep and that stuff. And it's just, I love the creative process. Like I really, really do. I love when you've got a song that's done and you kind of, go all right well done like i just finished uh i was in this there last night i just wrote a song for my mother who's getting a bit older and uh it's called mama and that's actually coming out in mother's day uh this year and it's uh, it's actually a traditional sort of country ballad but um no i i the process for me when i write when i get into the studio it's not work it's just fun and enjoyment you know and so I don't even care about, I'm, I'm not getting paid. I don't care, but you know what? I could do it all day and all night. It's just fantastic, you know? So. Yeah, that's that's when all like the passion that you have for music sort of comes into fruition almost, right? Because like you've been writing these songs, you've been working on them. Sometimes they take a completely different form in the studio and it's like an extension further of the creative process. It's like finalizing everything that you've done, recording all the parts and coming out with a record. Yeah, it's an amazing process that is. And I think, most musicians love it and me personally I can re relate in the fact that I love it almost more than playing music right like because it's so much more depth to it you know even like sound engineering and like getting into all that kind of stuff it's just yeah it's magical I'll, I'll be honest with you my greatest joy is songwriting and producing the song and getting it the way I want to sound I, I do enjoy playing but the biggest high I get is coming up with a really good song you know, that's what I, that's what I, that's what I enjoy the most, to tell you the truth. Makes sense. Um, it'd be good to actually to hear about like the business side of it as well. Like, obviously that's kind of the, the opposite. A lot of musicians don't enjoy the networking and the business side of it. It'd be good to hear about your experience in terms of how you promote yourself, how you go about building a fan base, um, what sort of content you put out there, stuff like that. Well, I just started working with uh, Scarlet River so for the uk so you probably know that so i hope rachel's doing a good job you have to tell me <laughs> and uh basically when i go out i i actually basically i don't really uh have a lot of merchandise at this point in time when i go out i basically have people i give them my social network stuff ask them to follow me you know and uh that's what's happening at this point in time yeah it makes perfect sense wow she she got you on the podcast for me anyway. So she did. I hear you have I hear you have to be famous to get on this podcast. That's what I've heard. That's, uh... <laughs> Not famous, sort of underground <laughs> and, and but nearly famous. That's that's what we well, aim for. Famous, maybe <laughs> Absolutely. Um so yeah, we've discussed obviously the, the songwriting process, like how you write some music, stuff like that. Um, do you ever collaborate with other musicians? Be good to hear about that, because obviously you are a solo artist, but have you done music and records with other people as well? Well, if you uh, were to look at my uh, my Spotify and 
that sort of stuff, you'll see that I actually have a dual act as well uh, with my buddy Maladin. And he's a, he's the guy that co-produces most of my stuff or produces it himself. And he's a very talented guy. I, I actually was lucky enough to write a song with him that w went to Disney, you know, was in, uh, in a movie called Pixel Perfect and a song called Notice Me. And uh, we have a sort of a modern sort of uh, alt pop Everly Brothers sort of, you know, act that we do as well. So it's a bit different. I just I did it, just a song just came out from that. It's called uh, Strange Jolfine. I don't know if you've heard it, but I invite you to go listen to it. And it's um, about homelessness and the scourge of homelessness and how people have preconceived ideas about the homeless and uh, how they think that, you know, all homeless people don't really have a, a reason for perhaps being homeless, but some people do because they've been abused or there's been some different issues there. So it's basically about homelessness awareness and it's a song called Strange Jolfine. Very interesting. Yeah, no, that, that's really good to hear. What about any others? Have you worked for other artists as well on top of that or just the duo? Uh, just basically with, with Maladin and myself, we've been working together for quite some time, you know, and my solo stuff. Awesome. Um, so we talked about um, your history a little bit. Be good to know what the plan is for the future for you. So what does like the not next like five or 10 years look like? I know that's quite far into the future, oh. but... <laughs> No, man, I don't look that far ahead, so I really can't tell you that. I mean, I'm hoping, I'm hoping that uh, I can uh, possibly come over to the UK, you know, and maybe uh, start, you know, touring a little bit around there. Um, but for me, basically, I just want to get my music out to as many people as I can, and I'm never going to stop writing. Like I'll probably write to the day I die, you know. It's uh, which I hope is longer than five or ten years, but uh, you know, that's. Uh, Really what I do is I, I, like I say, I'm a, I write a lot. I go through stages where I will write a ton, which I've just done, and then I may dry up for a bit. And that's what I was talking to you about before. If I try and force a song during that dried up phase, it's garbage. It, it never, ever comes out being, being good. But when I write and I'm writing, I'm on a spiel of writing, things seem to be a lot better. So for me, what I want to do is I want to get a strong amount of content out there. And then I want to start touring around and try and getting myself, you know, a name for myself by doing that. Yeah, it makes sense. Um, so we talked a little bit about that. Um, be good to actually hear like, maybe like what advice you'd give to musicians, you know, listening to this, you know, the audience for this show is kind of young musicians starting out or just like up and coming artists. So what advice would you give to them? My own personal belief, and this is only myself, is you have to believe in yourself. You have to stay true to yourself. You should not try and sound like anybody else. You should be able to take constructive criticism and never get too big you know, or think yourself too good because the same people you meet on the way up are the same people you meet on the way down. But don't try and sound like a cookie cutter. Try and sound unique. And to keep the faith because it's not easy being a musician now nowadays. But for me, again, it's not about money. It's about my heart. It's in my heart and my soul. And if you don't have that, if it's about money, do something else. Yeah, it's it's definitely not the the industry to get into if that's what you care about. <laughs> I think we both know that. Um, yeah. So we're nearly out of time today. It's been really great chatting. Um, well, but you, the, you, you too. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. You too. Um, but obviously, as we close out, is there anything else you'd like to leave the audience with or discuss? It's kind of like an open state from here out. Well, I just got, I was just going to say, if you want, if you want to check out my music, you can see it uh, on lyleoliver.com. You can also see it at Lyle Oliver Music, and uh, it's on Facebook. It's Lyle Oliver hyphen B M E G, and. Uh, Check me out and hope you enjoy my, my music. Nice one. Thanks, Lyle. Appreciate your time. Good cheers, brother. Okay. Nice to meet you. Angie. Thanks for watching, everyone. See you next time. Bye-bye.